Hey everyone, today I'm gonna go over a review on the different types of IV gauges used and the importance of why we use different gauges for certain IV infusions. I will also share with you what helped me remember the color of IV gauges. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. We use peripheral IVs for patients that need temporary IV fluids administered through the vein. This includes maintenance fluids, blood products, sometimes IV contrast for imaging and for antibiotics. The peripheral IV can be referred to as an angiocath or by the size of the gauge, or the nurse giving you handoff report may refer to it as the patient has a 22 gauge on the left forearm and a 20 gauge on the right hand. So let's move on to what those include. There are six IV gauges. What helped me remember them in nursing in school, I would visualize a painted photo with the yellow sun, that would be your 24 gauge. The blue sky was your 22 gauge. Pink flowers that happen to be peonies because they're my favorite would be your 20 gauge. With green grass as your 18 gauge and below that was a soil with the rocks which would be the color gray which makes your 16 gauge and below that was your orange lava making that your 14 gauge. It worked well. So let's move on to the selections of options you have available. So your 24 gauge, which is yellow, again, makes me think of the sun. Yellow is for your pediatric population because it is a small lumen. And I want you to remember this. The bigger the gauge, the smaller the lumen. Moving on to 22 gauge, which is blue. This would capture your blue sky. This can be used for your adult patient that was likely a difficult IV start. This line you can administer like antibiotics as ordered and is used temporarily and saline locked. Sometimes it will be a TKO peripheral IV meaning to keep vein open so normal saline will be infused at about maybe 10 mils per hour to keep the line patent. Next is your 20 gauge which is pink. That would be your pink flowers. This is the most adequate for blood transfusions, IV fluid boluses, IV maintenance fluids, antibiotics and or electrolyte replacements. This IV is your ideal gauge because it gives you more options to infuse at a faster rate if needed. It's always a preferred size gauge across the board like hands down. Then we have your 18 gauge, which is green, referred to as the grass. This one is not as commonly used on the inpatient floor, however, most commonly used by anesthesiologists and for surgery. So this may be the patient that comes out from surgery with a new IV or your OB mama that just had a baby. Moving on to 16 gauge, which is gray. This makes me think of soil and gray rocks and your 14 gauge, that is the color orange, which depicts the lava that I mentioned earlier that helped me remember my IV gauge sizes. So your 16 gauge and 14 gauge are the smallest gauges listed with the largest bore. So your 16 gauge and 14 gauge gauge are the most commonly used in emergency trauma setting where the patient needed like a massive blood transfusion from severe blood loss or from a code blue requiring rapid um, bolus infusions. So of the six I just listed, the most common ones used in an inpatient hospital setting is blue, pink, and green, must know. And as a bonus review for peripheral IVs, you want to know how long are they good for. So in general, your peripheral IV can remain in place for like about 96 hours. However, always refer to your hospital policy guidelines, which should be removed after 96 hours or three days or as needed. If the patient's IV goes bad, meaning it infiltrates or the patient complains of pain at the site or they're unable to flush the site, it should be removed immediately. If you're looking for more content on how to start an IV or how to find a vein, be sure to check out my videos included in the link below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.